we shall show them our signs on the furthest horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth. Then God turned to the heaven when it was smoke. Do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were joined together, then we split them apart into many pieces. be to God, Lord of the worlds. You've just seen a visual interpretation of the Big Bang, a theory of the creation of the universe widely accepted by scientists today. The words you heard were from the Quran, the holy book of Islam, recorded over 1,400 years ago. heart and soul of Islam. Muslims believe it to be the wisdom of God revealed for all mankind through his prophet Muhammad. It would seem to make no sense to look for factual scientific information in a book that primarily offers spiritual and social guidance through revelation. Yet within the Quran are many verses containing descriptions of the physical world that are remarkably similar to those of modern science. These verses span a wide range of subjects from the vast workings of the universe to minute details of life on earth. Do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and earth were joined together, then we split them into many pieces and we got every living thing out of water. Surat al-Anbiya, verse 30. It is in the way the Quran approaches knowledge that it differs so much from modern science. The scientific approach is to isolate and analyze the specific whilst the Quranic revelation always refers to the specific in relation to and as part of the whole pattern of creation. Today, science can explain many of the complex interactions which maintain the cycle of life on our planet. It's well understood how insects, animals and wind carry pollen from the stamens of one plant to the ovules of another. This process of fertilization in plants nearly always depends on the existence of definite sexual characteristics, the male stamens and the female ovules. Common knowledge today, but at the time of the Quranic revelation, such detailed information was not widely known. Nevertheless, in the Quran we read, Of all fruits God placed on the earth, two of a pair. Surat Arad, verse 3. God is the one who sent water down from the sky, and thereby we brought forth pairs of plants, each separate from the other. Surat Taha, verse 53.
The Quran describes the particular in order to further man's understanding of the unity of all things and his place within creation. In the light of this, we should perhaps expect to discover that any detailed observation made in the Quran should accord with modern scientific facts. It was the discovery of this relationship within his own field that led Dr. Maurice Bukai to make a scientific study of the Quran. As a medical doctor, particularly attracted to natural sciences and physiology, I must confess that in 19... 72, when I read the Quran in the original text for the first time, these data concerning man were those which impressed me most. And in view of the state of knowledge in Prophet Muhammad's day, it is inconceivable that many of the statements in the Quran which are connected with signs could have been the work of any man. This film is based on the research made by Dr. Bukai and published in two books, The Bible, The Quran and Science, and What is the Origin of Man? Dr. Bukai's initial interest developed into a general study of all the scientific references in the Quran. He realized that to fully understand these references, he had to develop a grasp of many specialized scientific disciplines. As his study progressed, he found that every description of the material world in the Quran correlated with established scientific facts. It is therefore perfectly legitimate not only to regard the Quran as the expression of revelation, but also to award it a, a very special place on account of the guarantee of authenticity it provides and the presence in it of reflection which when studied today appear as a challenge to human explanation. How is it possible for a book recorded in the 7th century to preempt so much of today's hard-earned scientific information? To understand this, we need to look at the nature of the Quranic revelation and examine its authenticity. Mecca, in the Arabian Peninsula, is the center of the Muslim world. Mecca has always been a holy place and was a center of pilgrimage long before the time of the Prophet Muhammad. It was here that Muhammad was born and grew up to become a highly respected member of the community and successful merchant trader. It was his habit to retreat to the nearby mountain of light for periods of meditation and contemplation. In the cave of Hira, at the age of 42, he received his first revelation on the 6th of August in the year 610. Read, in the name of your Lord who created, who created man from something which clings. Read, your Lord is the most noble, who taught by the pen, who taught man what he did not know. Surat Al-Alaq, verses 1 to 5. The revelations continued over a period of more than 20 years, up to the death of the Prophet in the year 632. The Prophet, being unable to read or write, called upon his literate companions and dictated to them, and so supervised the transcription and proper recording of the revelations. These fragments were later assembled as the Quran. Altogether, there are 114 surahs, or chapters, composed of more than 6,000 verses. Within 15 years of the Prophet's death, a final Quran had been compiled and authenticated by the Prophet's companions, who had been present with him throughout the revelations. This was achieved during the Caliphate of Uthman, at the town of Medina, where the Prophet is buried. When Muhammad brought his message to Mecca, Many of the people turned against him, and he was forced to flee with his followers. In Medina, he was given refuge, and it was here that the first Muslim community was founded, and Islam developed its social form. From that time, the Quran has never changed, and the original meaning of the words 